jealousy one can for, forgive, forget, because it's something you might lose. You feel jealous. Here, somebody else's success makes you diminish. And so, I remember when I was a youngster, must have been four years old, and there was another boy in the neighborhood. He was also about the same age. Who he had a red toy engine. And I couldn't stand it. And so one day when he was not looking, I broke that red toy engine. And so this is how I explore through personal example. When I was working in Bombay, we had a factory in Thane, which was next to the Philips factory. The Philips factory had been on strike for a whole year. And we were very worried about the effect on our labor and our workers. And one day, I really shuddered because the labor union, the leader, the union leader told his workers, I don't care if we ever open this factory as long as that Dutch factory manager goes down. So he's concerned with, it's, you know, it's, a, it's one of those things where everybody loses in the end with envy. So this is how lots of examples uh, about the envy of, I mean, if greed is the flaw of capitalism, <coughs> envy is the flaw of socialism. So I look at envy in socialist societies. And relate this to our own public life, the behavior of the CPM, uh, and, and so on. You get my point. But this is the way I go about it. I'll give you another uh, example in another chapter. Um, you will remember a character called Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama was the son of Drona. And Dronacharya had been killed in the war in the most unfair way. And when Ashwatthama heard of it, he vowed revenge. And in the part, that in the Saupatika Parvat, which is book 10, of the epic. Book 10 of the epic. Ashwatthama is, there are only, there are three Kauravas. Can I request you please to shut your cell phones? Thank you. There are only three Kauravas left at the end. This is the 18th day, the war is over, the Pandavas have won. Duryodhan is dead. And these three Kauravas, one of them is Ashwatthama, who has been anointed by Duryodhan as the commander, commander of an army of three people. And they go and hide in the forest because they are hiding from the Pandavas. <coughs> They come and they rest under a tree. The other two fall asleep. But Ashwatthama sees this tree with crows are sleeping in this tree above him. And an owl swoops on this tree and kills the crows. And Ashwatthama sees this as an omen for himself. It's an omen 
that he has to do what the owl did, which is, and then he says that I am going to go and burn the sleeping armies, like the sleeping crows, the sleeping armies of the Pandavas. And that's, he does this horrible deed and all the Pandavas except the five, the whole Panchalas, all the armies are finished after that. So not only are the Kauravas destroyed, but the Pandavas are destroyed. And that's why Yudhishthir says at the end, after that, that this feels, this victory feels like defeat. So, I stopped the action around that, about this point, and I asked, tell the reader, now what's going on here? And this leads me into a discussion of <coughs> revenge. And of course, revenge today, only the state is allowed to take revenge. And we call it retributive justice, and we have police, and we have uh, judges, who will give sentences against crimes that are committed. And there's a whole... I, I keep going back and forth between the Mahabharata and, and today because, of course, Ashwatthama also is sentenced uh, towards the end. But the whole question of revenge is suddenly, you know, after the war, Yudhishthira forgives Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was a major cause of the war. And if we were in the end of the Second World War, you would have had the Nuremberg trials of the war criminals. And Dhritarashtra was one of the chief war criminals. But Yudhishthir forgave him. And he did it, he said, because he wanted to heal the society of Hastinapur and break the polarization in the society. And so, well, the question that this, I pose at this point is that in some cases, it might be better in our society to have forgiveness rather than punishment or rather than a court, retributive justice in court. And I was thinking of examples like South Africa where the famous Truth and Reconciliation Commission led to the healing of the South African society and Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu, they really created something very, very unusual. So when I was reading this portion of the Mahabharat, Narendra Modi won his election in Gujarat. And I was, I wrote a column, my, one of my Sunday columns in the Times of India, in which I raised the question with Narendra Modi, that I said, why don't you, open letter to Narendra Modi, that why, now that you won the election, and we also know that Muslims have voted for you, as a gesture of magnanimity, why don't you ask forgiveness of the Muslims? You don't have to admit, and in South Africa, when they did this truth and reconciliation, there was not a question of admitting guilt or talking about punishment or crimes that were done. It was a gesture of reconciliation. So just say that I ask the I ask forgiveness from the Muslims of Gujarat for 2002. The week after my column appeared, Professor J.S. Bandukwala, 